Welcome to the Uncomplicating Weight Loss Podcast. My name is Eva Rodriguez, proud Latina, single mom, and certified integrative nutrition, health, weight loss, and mindfulness coach. I'm passionate about teaching women how to balance being busy and healthy without complicated rules or restrictions. On this podcast, I'll be simplifying weight loss concepts and mindset shifts so that you can be confident in your curves. It won't always be easy, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Hey friends, before we dive in, I want to share my brand new free weight loss mini training called the six simple steps to losing weight. In this video training, I'm going to teach you my step-by-step framework to losing weight and keeping it off. I also created a workbook that you'll be able to download so that you can put each step into action. One of the most common things I hear is, I really want to lose weight, but I have no idea where to start. And I totally get it. I know how overwhelming and confusing it can be. And that's exactly why I created this training. It's quick and to the point, and you will learn exactly what to do to jumpstart your weight loss. You can either click the link in my show notes or just go to my website, www.eva.fit. In this episode, I'm answering another listener question. This question is from Erin, and she asked, how do I know how much weight to use and how many reps and sets? It's a really common question that I'm happy to answer. Now, keep in mind, it will all depend on your level of fitness and if you have any restrictions. So it's really important to understand and trust your body and speak to your doctor if you need to. So in case you're new here, I think strength training is the best thing that you can do to change your body quickly. And if you haven't taken my free weight loss mini course, you totally should because my workbook actually has a full body workout to help you get started with strength training. And it takes around 20 minutes. So it's really simple and very effective. These are the kinds of workouts that I did to lose my last 20 pounds and the types of workouts that I create for my private clients. They're super effective when it comes to fat burning and building lean muscle. Lifting heavier weights is the secret to getting a leaner, more fit body. Lifting weights is also great for improving your bone density, joint mobility, and body composition. Plus, it makes daily tasks like carrying groceries, moving furniture, climbing stairs, even standing up from a chair. It makes all of those things much easier. So that means those two to five pound weights are not going to cut it. The only time I recommend super light weights is if you're going on a power walk or something like that. First, I'll start with the four most common myths around lifting weights, especially when it comes to women lifting weights. Myth number one, lifting heavy makes you bulky. So this simply is not true. The reality is that unless you're purposely trying to get bulky, it will not happen accidentally. Women have testosterone levels that are about 15 to 20 times lower than those of men. So hormonally speaking, we're just not likely to get jacked like they would. Now, the caveat here is that if you're adding muscle to your body without monitoring your diet or burning fats, you may look bulky. So it's important to be burning fat as well as building muscle to lose inches. There's a big difference between your body burning fat and your body burning sugar. I actually have an episode that goes into detail about this. It's episode 49, how to start burning your fat for fuel. So if you haven't listened to that episode, highly recommend it. I train my clients to become fat adapted. And then once they've become fat adapted, then we start the more intensive fat burning workouts using dumbbells or barbells. Because the reality is if you're overeating and lifting weights, you're not going to get the results that you're looking for. You might just end up building muscle over fat. So it's really important to get your body into fat burning mode as opposed to sugar burning mode. Myth number two, muscle can turn into fat. So this is also not true because muscle and fat are two completely different types of tissue. So even if you slack off with your weight training, that muscle won't turn into fat. Lack of muscle use just leads to muscle cells shrinking. And if they keep shrinking, the cells just eventually die off. 
That's not to say there's not a relationship here. If you lose muscle mass, you'll burn fewer calories per day. And if you're overeating and not working out, the excess food energy that you're not burning can be stored as fat. Myth number three, cardio burns more fat. I can't tell you how many times I've heard someone say they think they need to do more cardio to lose weight before they start lifting and doing strength training. Lifting weights increases the baseline number of calories that you burn each day. Muscle tissue is the most metabolically active tissue in our bodies. So the more muscle you have, the more energy you expend. So by lifting weights, you're actually burning more calories even when you're resting. These are the small things that add up and make a huge difference on your weight loss journey. And myth number four. Lifting weights will make you gain weight. So this one is not so much a myth, but more of a misunderstood truth. The terms leaner and lighter are not interchangeable. That means that the scale may not move and may even go up when you start lifting weights. When I see this happen with either myself or my clients, I always look at the body fat percentage data. And because I know that the scale going up can trigger anxiety and cause some of us to think that we're doing something wrong, it's important to look at body fat percentage as well as how much you weigh. Most scales will calculate both of these for you. What I love about weightlifting is the more muscle you gain, you'll start to notice that your clothes start to feel differently. They start to look differently. They start to fit differently on you. But keep in mind, leaner does not mean less weight. It's more about the physical changes, the physique changes. So I always wanna caution not to get too attached to the number on the scale. The number on the scale is just a neutral number. And just because the scale goes up doesn't necessarily mean that you have gained fat, right? It just might mean that because you're lifting more, you have more muscle mass. Okay, so now that we've busted the muscle building myths, Here are some tips to help you determine how heavy you should lift. So one trick is to pick up different free weights with one hand until you find the heaviest one that you can pick up and do one move with. So for example, one bicep curl or one chest press. Once you know the heaviest one that you can lift, you'll want to choose a weight for your actual reps that's around 65% of the weight of your heavy one. So for example, Let's say you can lift a 15 pound weight in one arm at least once without falling over or almost dropping it. But a 20 pound weight is too heavy. 65% of 15 pounds is 9.75 pounds. So try doing your reps with 10 pound dumbbells. Keep in mind that how many reps you do can be just as important as how heavy your weights are. If you wanna increase strength, You want to go as heavy as possible with one to eight reps each set. If you want to build muscle, go for five to 12 reps per set. And if you want to improve muscle endurance, then go for 12 to 20 reps per set. When I create my workout programs, I generally use eight to 15 rep sets since they help to develop a combination of strength and muscle endurance. And if they start to feel too easy, then we increase the weights. I recommend increasing the weights and not increasing the reps because once you go over the 20 rep range, you hit a point of diminished returns. The main point is, if you're lifting too light, you're not gonna see the results you're after. Obviously, you shouldn't be lifting so heavy that it hurts or that it's uncomfortable. I always recommend that it feel challenging but doable. Another tip for you. Our legs are stronger than our upper body because the muscles are bigger in our legs. So when you're doing exercises that target your legs, challenge yourself to lift heavier. I personally have issues with my neck and my shoulders, so I have to be very careful when I'm lifting over my head. So generally, I don't go above 15 pounds if I'm lifting anything over my head. It's important that you listen to your body. If you feel sore afterwards, that's okay. Use a foam roller, drink lots of water, and get your electrolytes back up. But if you feel any pain at all, that is not okay, and you should stop immediately. Also, 
I highly recommend using a mirror to check your form whenever you're lifting. I can't tell you how many times I'm at the gym and people literally like turn their backs to the mirror. And I'm like, the mirror is there for you to check your form. It's not there for you to check yourself out and take selfies. It is there for you to check your form first and foremost. So make sure that you use your mirror. And if you're doing it from home, try to have a mirror nearby so you can make sure that your form is correct. So thank you, Erin, for submitting this question. I love answering questions from my listeners. So if you have any burning questions, you can always submit yours at www.eva.fit forward slash question. It will also be linked in my show notes. And of course, if you would like personalized coaching to help you reach your weight loss goals faster, you can set up a consultation call with me by filling out my coaching application that will also be linked in my show notes. That's all for today. Bye for now. Thanks so much for tuning in this week and trusting that none of this has to be complicated. At the end of the day, I want you to feel empowered to know that you can have the health, the body, and the life that you desire. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode and tag me on Instagram while listening at It's Eva Rodriguez so that I can support you along your journey. I'll talk to you next week. Bye.